get shot, Miss Kisha. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna have a year pretty soon. Congratulations. Yes, I'm going on a year. And I was scared to death. I was scared to death when I walked out of Santa Cora that, you know, is this gonna work for me? Yeah. You know? I'm Shannon Neal, and um, on December 22nd, 2021, I will have one year of sobriety. So the last time I got drunk, uh, Chuck and I worked together on the ranch, and um, we had a little tit-tat at work, and um, turned into a big tit-tat, and I just left. And, and of course, I went right to alcohol, and I drank. and. Um, I went back to the house at five o'clock in the morning and he came in and he was like, I don't know what you're going to do, but he said, um, I'm not, I I'm not here for this ride no more. And he took his ring off and put it on the dresser in the bedroom. And that it was like, a, it was like a bullet. I knew I deserved worse than that. I was like, okay, I'm either going to check in to some place and get help or I'm, I'm going to have to kill myself because I can't keep go doing this. And uh, so I called, reached out and tried to call Dan, and uh, he called me back shortly, and I, and I told him. Dan Hosh runs a group called Call to Recovery, and um, they have them in Chandler. Mostly Henderson County. Henderson County. Yeah. And it's, it's a growing, and how many years have you had it? Uh, since two, June 9th of 2008. It's just to be an option from people out there right now. Uh, our step, we're addictions anonymous, so it doesn't matter if it's alcohol, meth, pornography, or gambling. It's just a resource, an option, and our step one says we, we admit we're powerless over and it's a blank, and our lives are manageable. So all we're saying is, let's get out of the problem and into the solution. Some people stop at step one as the problem, the badge of honor, it's alcohol, it's meth, it's gambling, it's pornography. That's not the problem. <laughs> You know, so we want to get them into the solution, and that's just an option. We say we're as sick as our secrets. We gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta put them in the light. You know, when you work the steps, um, you really look inside yourself, and you go back as far as you can remember, and write down things that hurt you or that you were, um, that you caused. You know, problems that you caused, and you go back, and then and you really work through it, and you realize, you start realizing where you're getting this, um, the feelings, and where your failure feelings are just coming from. And one thing that was big for me was, um, in my family, when I was born, nobody wanted girls, and I was the only girl. And so um, that, you know, subconsciously, it must have been bothering me a lot more than uh, I let on. Oh, four or five years ago, I went back to college for welding and got a degree in welding. And um, the things that I enjoy doing are things that's kind of in a man's field. So if you really look back and you can put two and two together and know that I, as a kid, I, w I was trying to get my dad's attention, I believe, mostly, and, and to prove that I could do everything that the boys could do. And um, I remember feeling that way, but you know, never would you look at it and, and know later that that would cause you to turn to alcohol. When you went to Senecor, uh, Dan told me that this would be the best Christmas I ever had, and uh, and he was right. The the two weeks she was in Senecor was worth half our life because when she come out, and from that day since, she has been a different woman. I mean, she she's now the woman I married 20 years ago. Uh, she's she's loving, she's kind, she's gentle, and. Um, our life since Senecor is, is hard to describe. It is so good. It's almost like we're learning each other again because I, I have to say I can't just go along with. And if I don't want to do something or have something or whatever it is, I have to speak up then or it's my own fault and I can, you know, deal with the consequences. But I find myself a lot of times, you know, Chuck will be frustrated with me like, and I know he's probably thinking, what happened to, you know, she used to be so easy going, but I wasn't easy going, you know, it's just, I was normal, but, you know, I, I got irritated at things, but I drank it off and didn't show it. If you were in the hospital with cancer, it's a disease, cancer's a disease. Alcoholism is a disease. And since she's found the freedom to talk about it, she talks about it now with all the family members and, and um, people on the street. You know, what, what has happened to her life, it's just, it's a complete turnaround.
the few times that I that I speak out, I mean, I don't just go around announcing this, but it just seems like I'll know the person or I'll know the right time to say it. And every time I've said it out loud or around people, you can't believe how many people will come and talk to you about it then that they were in the same way or they they need help now and they're not comfortable asking, they're scared or they're embarrassed. And um, so I feel it's God's sin to, to get to try to help somebody um, find freedom and find peace in their life.